All right, so I recorded the uh, one to three star servants a while ago. Um, I'm going to eventually release them, but only after, like, once it's closer to the date, I'm actually going to start uh, doing tier list stuff. So right now, September 7th, not sure exactly when I'll do this uh, stuff on stream again, but it should be in the near future. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Uh, Soto G is going in EX, like, off the rip. By the way, this is just an update to the tier list that I made way back at the start of the year. Uh, just adjusting it for, like, all the... Mainly, like, meta shift, and it's mostly a pen 5. Uh, Sono G is going to go up into EX. We'll get to it later, um, which is not, like, to start with. Uh, we're actually going to be going through this list top to bottom just to briefly go through it. Uh, again, if you want more in-depth for this version, like this year's stuff, go back and watch the original one for my reasoning. Uh, this is just going to be like me justifying uh, moving people based on buffs. All right. So Halloween Ellie. He can loop now without uh, super scope. The issue is her damage is going to be shit. It's going to be not good. The only advantage is that she's MP5. If you try to do like some... You could do like decent damage. It's still an MP MP5 four star that's able to do double bitch Oberon. Like, but a you need this max out. But because she's a welfare, you're gonna have the coins, or you should be able to get the coins, um, or just bond level her just a little bit, and you should be able to unlock this. Yeah, like even if I'm pretty sure even if you like, outside of Avocation, if you played through the original distribution of her, like, you should have so many serving points. Uh, sorry. The R Halloween rerun, not the original distribution. There were no serving coins. You probably just stacked up a bunch of rare prisms, though. Um, but serving coins, it would have had to be the Halloween super rerun where we got all of the originals. Uh, you should actually have the coins for that, though. Uh, if you played through that, if not... Just buy some through evocation if you really want to. I cannot move her up that high though. At all. I don't don't like her gameplay. It's like it's not good. Uh I have her here at D. I am willing to move her up to C because the fact that she can least loop is something, but you're gonna choose Q Caster. Who caster is just like straight up better because you can use black rail and it will just do more damage. If there's ever a support that gives a debuff that's treated as a buff AoE, like and you can use that servant in like as an actual farming support, I would be willing to at least move her up to like B or A. Because then she is able to do black rail looping and she's a free MP5 uh that you don't need to clear through uh, Lost Belt 6 to get. And you do only need one... Uh, no. Uh, hold on one second. Do you even need this skill leveled? No, you don't. So, like, in general, like, if Ku like, Caster and Ellie... Uh, no, no, even still, even still, with Ellie being able to black row loop, she's not going to beat Kukasters simply because she does not have any other buffs that will be able to be stacked. So, yeah, her placement is C, and it's uh, and it's not going to go up until she A gets an MP buff that gives her like some kind of ramp up, or B, they buff her second skill and lets like allows her to be able to be double stacked. She she needs work that isn't necessarily tied to her. It's more stuff around, but like, at, to make her shine, you need a very specific support, which I don't think people are willing to roll that much just for that. All right, next, Nobunaga. Did she change? Uh, not really. She wasn't really a farmer to begin with, so the cooldown reduction kind of doesn't matter that much. 
Uh, if you only use her for esports, it's not changing. Get real is just dark only closing these out. All right, uh, Salter, uh, or KFC, King of Fried Chicken, or King of Fried Christmas. Oh my God, like KFC for her is such, like such a good like name. I'm actually so proud of myself for that. Uh, Salter, did she change um, since I looked at her? Uh, not that I know, but there is a little cool tech you can do because of this five turn, like pretty much for all mana bursts now, um, it's like for Buster mana bursts. If they're on a five turn cooldown, and because of the cooldown reduction, you're actually able to pop this twice in the same turn if it's maxed out. Um, you do have to double pop bitch, and this is turn two, so it's highly not advised. I'm just saying it's something you can do. Um, yeah, no, I think Salter hasn't changed enough to warrant this. Yeah, no. She, she just doesn't. Mm -mm. Yep, Salter's not changing. I, I don't, I don't see a reason to. What do I have her at? Extremely niche. Eh, eh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm. Okay, actually, because I'm thinking it like this, and like Saber Gilles de Ray actually has a better skill than this, but this, like, he's not doing damage. This allows her to actually do damage, too. So, yeah, no, no. Uh, she stays in niche because of, like, all this shit on that skill, actually. All right. Next. Oh, wrong button. Lily, I don't think anything has changed. 20% battery on a four turn. That's not enough. Yeah, no. No, you're, you're not changing. Oh, I'm going to have to open that back up later. Oh, well. Uh, Shiki. Where do I have Shiki? I have you in A+. Plus. That's fair. Yeah, no. There was no change for you. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm just happy. Yeah, no, Shiki. You're not, a, you're not EX because your face cards aren't great. And honestly, your skill set isn't great. But what you do at insta kill farming is just so it it's she is like literally the best insta kill farmer. Um, as long as she she, she can get through MP. Like and I the way I use her, it's not as intended. Like if I really wanted to like do insta kill farming and like not have to worry about RNG uh on my ult, I would just like give Cheeky a fifty percent and then I'm not worrying about carding. The fact that I, like, have the luxury to actually worry about carding when I'm using her uh, in, like, Doman and, you know, Grace teams uh, are fairly good. Like, the fact that I can, like, QP farm from zero with her along with, like, charging, like, a bunch of other characters in the back line. Like, I actually, I do put, like, value on this. But outside of insta-kill insta farming, um, she's okay. She's a single target arts assassin. Uh, she doesn't have that much competition, though. If there was a another welfare single target assassin, which I, I'm just double checking that I'm not like forgetting someone. I cast her. Uh, 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 yeah, like I don't know every single servant off the top of my fucking head. Like it's not. It's not, like, it's not when I was a kid and I can remember literally every single Pokemon in the original, which I, I can. I just, like, 
pro like show me a picture i wouldn't say the name um like and i kind of can do that all the way to like gen 4 i think i don't know um yeah no all the other assassins are aoe so shiki like there is no other single target arts assassin like uh that you can get easily she has like really good stuff in her kit she's staying there uh iris feel again i don't think anything's changed uh just the fact that asclepius did get a buff so For the people like, um, mm, yeah, like, I do think she needs to stay niche. Like, I think Asclepius is, like, straight out better. But Asclepius has problems being able to, like, pop his MP multiple times. Like, a lot of problems. Like, he would have to be getting hit a lot to be able to spam guts, spam, like, spam people having guts. Iris Feel kind of can just do it. So, yeah, like, she's less up here as a healer and more gut spammer. Uh, and again, I'm just working through this because I haven't done this in like a good eight, seven, seven, eight months. Uh, Kentucky, no changes for him. Uh, he still works very good, but his third skill has needed a buff. And so, like, same for Berserker King, Kentucky. Um, people have them and like, people have Berserker in high value. Uh, I really don't just because i prefer again i prefer i see his value i just would prefer a different more powerful unit um is is like people hold value for him but they also don't give a shit about his cards it's like other units they don't do as much damage as him but they have like cards to follow up that are like really good like in Toki's like base cards that are not that good unless you're just hitting red. Um, but this Kentucky. Uh I don't think anything changed. Yeah, no, nothing changed. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right. Uh Shisho Assassin. Wait. Um, I'm just trying to remember when they got these buffs. If it was before or after, I I, I know Shisho has had this buff for a while. Um, but it's like other servants. I'm just like not. I'm not fully remembering when they got the buffs. Um, or if it was in between. Which is why I'm kind of like going through this slowly. Just so I don't make sure I don't forget any buffs that happen. Um, yeah, no, she show no change. Uh, Chloe shouldn't be a change. She didn't get a buff. No, she's had that for a while. Uh, yep, no change. Brave Ellie. This one actually did have a change, but it's not from the append. So. This right here, this statement, demerit. This means that Alco can block this. Alco can block Saber Liz's drain. That actually is pretty big. Because it means that she can actually MP the turn she like activates this skill. Uh, and you do not have to waste, you don't have to use three 50% chargers just to get her to MP or start her off with 50 and then waste another 50% charger. So like 
I'm not saying she, she is definitely not the best. Absolutely not. Like Yori shits on her entire existence. Like I would never use Brave Liz over Yori. But you can't currently get Iori. You had to play through his event. So, I'm willing to. Oh, you're gonna see. I'm willing to move you up to C, only on the condition that Alco is used. Alco like has to be used, like period. Otherwise, goes back down. Uh, yeah. Next, Jean the Arc Alter Santa Lily. Uh, when was this MP buff? I'm pretty sure, like, I already. Oh. When? Uh, when did I do this list? Uh oh. January? Okay. Yeah, no. So this is the new. This one is uh new. Oh wait. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Ain't no way this is new. Because there's no way I would have put uh Santa Altar into super niche if it wasn't for this skill i would have put sent to alter in d tier if it wasn't for this skill so this has to be with this buff in mind like the, i there's no conceivable way it's not um four turn cooldown for 40 uh, 20 battery yeah no um You are able to pop this back-to-back -back turns, but she's not farming like that. Like, you wouldn't want to use her in farming because uh, debuff resists. You don't care about this for farming. So, yeah, no. If I put her in C, I put her in C for a reason. It's, it's with that buff in mind. Uh... Right. Uh yeah, now I remember. This is when Rush got that buff. And yeah, no, that's the buff that lets Rush block red loop now. Um uh, yeah, so not changing that. Cha cha. Uh any cooldown stuff? Yes, she can get her Buster Buff turn two. And then she gets 40% per turn on that second turn. Huh. And she's... Uh, yeah, like that's kind of good utility. You get that, like that's C. That is CL level utility. Like passive forty percent MP gauge and a double bitch. Um. Oh, sorry. I'm very sore from benching so much last night. I or yesterday after work, I benched thirteen k pounds. Um. So my arms are probably not going to be feeling too good during stream today. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't feel like changing Cha Cha. I, I think that's a cool kit, but no, BB, this one is she is definitely going up, simply because BB Dubai exists. Uh, BB Dubai literally lets uh this BB be like arts crit DPS like fairly easily. Uh, her arts cards will gen stars. Uh, like, 100% chance. Charges the party's gauge by 20. Like, this is, like, really 
This is gonna be like really solid MP spam with um this BB as a DPS. Uh Yeah, and she has this for utility. I'm like it's not usual that like it, I'm putting such emphasis on a five star, but like BB is so specific for moon cancers and living humans. Um oh okay, hold up. Mm, mm. So wait, let me think about that. Because by that logic, Chloe would go up too. Mm, hold up. Yeah, hold up. Hold up. Yeah, so the only living humans on this... Oh, I... Does Iris feel count as a living human? I don't... I don't think she does. No. Ain't no way, like, Iris Field counts as a living human. No, no shot. Like, she actively part of the Grail. Yeah, no. Ilya, yes. Iris Field, no. Um, damn. I do okay, so I'm not gonna move BB. Not gonna yeah, let me just unpin this too. Okay. Not gonna buff BB. She is like pretty high as it is, and getting into here not easy. Um like people can talk me down from Kentucky, and honestly, I wouldn't be against it. Um No, not right now. Not until there's more in the evocation, because I'm pretty sure he's still... It's like him and Ryoma, and most people aren't going to choose Ryoma. They're going to choose um, Kintoki. Um, like, specifically for, like, farming, they more likely choose Kintoki because he has a, like, big battery. Um... Uh, again, these two not changing, but they did get bought by Summer BB. Uh, if there was an in between, they definitely would go in there. But I don't want to like bloat this list up too too much. Uh, yeah. Bunyan. Oh no no no! I have Bunyan on the other list. Okay. Bunyan's free, but not welfare. It's a little different. Ishtar. Okay. No, this is the biggest change. This is probably the biggest change. So because she has the MP gain for three turns and she has the battery, uh, she is able to do black rail looping, which she, she's gone from traces to black rail. Uh, you're in C. You, I think, go to A. Mm, yeah, no, I, yeah. So the reason Nemo isn't in A is because his loot refund is like just enough to do loop against three three casters. Um, they were very very safe with him for like I, and I believe this is multi core farming, which is what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be an AOE arts multi core farmer. Um, his refund is only just enough to be able to MP, and then he's probably gonna have batteries from. Supports if it's like not enough. Ishtar is like literally hitting where she needs to. Um, like, and obviously, Nemo, you can add in uh, more stuff, but he's he wants to multi core with a very specific type of servant, which is why he's like in B. It's because it's a little too restrictive. We'll get we'll get to Nemo later though. Um, but yeah, her buff, I'm like definitely willing to like bump her up because this is like 
This is her like a massive skill for her too. Um like as a crit turn. So like whether she's doing farming or CQ, she does have like good utility uh that she can either use for her farming or she can save for when she needs it. Like when she has like a really good crit turn or something. Uh also like this being AoE, she can do multi-core stuff too. Specifically, like Ruler Scotty, you'll appreciate the AoE buffs. So, yeah. Good buff for Ishtar. Next. The Mecha Ellie's, I don't think any cha anything changed with them. Uh... You can get 60% defense, like, a little bit easier, but it's, like, not enough. Uh, yeah, no, no, nothing is really changing with them. They are where they are. Uh, Altera Vicenta. No buffs. Um, Alco can negate this, but I don't know how likely you're using Alco with uh Altera. Plus these are gonna be on four turn cooldowns with the append. And she's quick so it doesn't that doesn't matter that much. It does matter more with Alco because she can reduce cooldowns, but you you can't get her to block this and then also get her to reduce cooldowns it's like it is one or the other like does she cancel uh demerits or is she cooldown re reduction uh you have to know that already Sieg. anything change with you Sieg? not really you are still as solid as you are. And the pens really doesn't change anything until Tomomo comes in. So, yep, you're staying. Where do I put you? EX, yeah. Yeah. Ryoma. Uh, where did I place you? E. Right, okay. So I put, now I remember why I put them uh why i put nemo and b like another reason these two are really 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 well together like disgustingly well together like the last node of uh the most recent lotto on jp and i think i talked about this last video too um these two together farm the shit out of the 90 plus plus and i think i was six slotting too uh when two welfares have this level of synergy, uh, to the point you don't really need to use five stars as DPSs, um, and Honkai, their tier listing, that would count as like a specialist, where like you kind of have to use these two together for like really good value. Um, I'm not gonna add something like that to this list just because it's convoluted. Um, I just like move them next to each other just for reasons, but. Yeah, these two really good uh, next to each other, with each other. Uh, more AoE arts buffs would be nice for both of them. Uh, probably one cast away for whoever needs to do the most damage. Uh, but yeah, like Ryoma, he needs more buffs, 100%. He needs skill buffs. But now he, like, his function has always been multi core. Now he has someone to actually do multi-core with that act and he will get buffed from my uh from them too. But because he's that specific, I can't make him higher. Like, I'm not like he Liz and Kentucky are so much better than him. Sorry, not sorry. Next, Jolter. any changes for her uh he is he 
Mm-mm. Uh, no matter what, I can't pump her up. She, like, she's needed a buff. I think she's solid, but I think she still needs a buff. Where do I have her? Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. She's still she's still a wildfire buster berserker. Like you literally can't go wrong with her. So just like red till you're dead and you'll be fine. Ah, uh, shoot and cast her. No, no changes. No changes. Um, you are able to pop this back to back turns now, which cool. Uh I that's still not enough, but that is awesome that she can do that. But getting doing consecutive NPs is going to be a hassle. That is the issue. And she has nothing really going on with the poison. I feel she needs she has like a lot of steroids. But at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they buffed this skill and gave her a power mod against, uh, oh no, she already has power mod against demonic. Um, this, this is some high ass overcharge for poison damage though. Um, Yeah, I could see them buffing this and making it three turns and throwing a battery on there. Yeah. Uh, wherever I have her, uh, I'm not going to change it. Again, I'm not trying to like do all of these today. I do want to actually stream soon, and we got a lot to do. Still not at the point where I started playing FGO. Samba Cats. Uh, she is popping these turn these skills like a lot sooner, but not enough to like matter. Like, like she can pop these on back to back turns, but she kind of always could do that. Uh, yeah, and you're wasting. You are actually wasting like cooldown reduction. Uh, yeah, you're wasting cooldown reduction if you do have her third append. Because then you have, like, you'll have to bring someone that does one if you want to, like, min-max how much you reduce cooldowns. Yeah, so... Some gets isn't changing either. Gray, not changing. Kage Tora. Uh, when did your buff go through? Okay, so Kage Tora. Your buff is not on here. Okay. So we are, yeah, we're talking about Kagetora now. Nope. Oh. Alright, open. Alright. So, Arts buff went from one turn and uh, Star Rate from one turn to 30% for three turns and a 20 battery. The battery situation not being 30 kind of doesn't matter because Kagatora is an arts. But the MP gain is still one turn. Uh, yeah. So I can I believe uh Kagatora no matter what, you'd be putting black rail on anyway. You wouldn't be starting from 50. You'd be using black rail because like Kagatora probably can refund her MP like if not 100% close to it with uh, the arts buff and the MP game buff being active. Um, I still don't want to move Kage Tora. Like, getting that arts up being three turns, awesome. I still don't think it's worth 
going up a tier. Yeah, it like it's. I want to say it's mostly this charisma because it's just twenty percent star gen on an art servant just pisses me the fuck off. Like they, and like that's that's the thing. Like I want this to be a hundred percent. Are they gonna buff this skill to make it a hundred percent though? And that's all they do. No, because that would be a terrible buff. Like oh, like yes, this is already at the twenty standard. But it, I feel like if they're gonna bump this up to hundred, they have to also do something else. They can't. They can't just buff the sergeant for this. I also want this to be three turns. So it's like weird spot. Uh, MP damage. Uh, Agitora. Real target better. Uh. Where the fuck are you? Ah, there you are. All right. Um, yeah, sixty thousand blows the MP ones out the water. Uh, but that's kind of all she's doing. She's just bringing damage, while all these other units are probably like buff removal, power mods. Like, yeah, you need another buff before I'm like moving you up. You got more consistent. That's the, definitely a plus. Way more consistency. But you need damage too now. Uh, Hokusai Saber. I don't think uh, anything changed. Neither Nightingale. Arise. Uh, Insta Kill is still uh, before damage, if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken. Yeah. Insta Kill first. Uh, so, no. You're not changing. Sorry, I hate insta kill happening first. It like fucks up all her looping. Like unless there's break bars, you're suffering. Uh, Guchan, again, no change. Uh, she's still solid, and she has anti mail, which again, good. Uh, Karna Santa. Ah. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm so tempted to actually bu bu uh, bump you down. I am so fucking tempted. Because, like, your MP gimmick, weak, because you can't do anything about unremovable guts. You hit counts. Like, something similar to Idol, but at least you have 50% crit damage. I don't think Idol has anything to go with hers. Uh oh wait no there's this okay no 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 Karna Karna's not just up here for his DP um DPS he's also here because um if you don't have Alco he's kind of the only way uh units like Fran are actually able to loop uh people used to use BB for it in the past but he has a battery with three time debuff immunity which again that's more than enough. Or someone like friend to actually be able to loop three times. A refund should be good enough. Uh, but Alco is just straight up going to be better. Because there is no stun anymore. And she also gets a card buff. Along with 20% per turn. Which for quick units. that That is way more impactful. Than any amount of MP gain you could possibly give them. Like we're talking like. Well into 100% MP gain. For 20%. Uh, Charge per turn, not to matter. Uh, the only servants that like don't want that want more MP gain than charge per turn are ones that are already looping well above 50%. Like 60, 70, Charlemagne, Okita, those level of quick loopers, like the ones that break the mold. Uh, Kichi, staying in EX. Uh, I know Valks are up there. But Kichi, though, like Valks, their face, like Kichi's up there because face card refund is like actually good. Like Valks, their face cards are dog shit. If they don't have, if second they run out of buffs, they are dead in the fucking water. Kichi at least has like a 
like really good face guards, or like decently good, not it's not super amazing, but decently good face guards to fall back on. Uh, and still has this utility of removing buffs. Uh, I think Valks are like insta kill. I think like that's the only reason Valks are in A and Kiji's in EX. Idol X. Uh, let's see. You're, she's kind of only up here because she's a foreigner. If I'm being completely honest, she's only up in B because she's a foreigner. Um, and uh, Nock, Nock is like up here. Yeah, like Nock is better, like straight up better than Idol. But mm, yeah, no, mechanical is just too rare. Even though this, right now, this actually is good utility because with the cooldown reduction, you can pop this back to back turns. Um, for the crit damage, I mean, uh, if you really, really want to, you could pop it in the same turn, but you kind of already were able to do that. Uh, now you can just time it. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. So. No, unlike Rama, you aren't going to want to, like, wait. Hmm. Yeah, you're not going to want to, like, stagger it like you would, like I talked about in Rama's video. Uh, just because you are going to want to be popping these three, these other two skills. So you just don't have enough from the append to, like, warrant doing that kind of attack. You probably could get away with it, honestly, by not doing this because of the hit count restriction. Like if you want to do this, these two first, uh, first turn and then next turn you do this and then you pop these, it probably is the best use of it because then you will be able to pop this again with another rich battery going off. But yeah, no idle X. Stay. Right, I need coffee now. Mm. Lukewarm now. Uh, da Vinci's not changing. Ellie's. Ooh. Do you change because of cooldown reduction, though? Four turn. Goes into a three turn 30 battery? Whoa. Mm. Yeah, like, I wouldn't even be using her in farming if I didn't have to. Like, Ellie is, like, CQ. Like, heavy, heavy CQ because of the uh, cleanse. So... It makes her better, but the cooldown situation is, like, it makes her better in CQs, but, like, not by that much. Like, we're talking about, like, just the first uh, skill pops. It's, like, it's good. It's not enough. Like, basically, these cooldown reductions, if it's not affecting their farming or how they function as a servant, similar, like... And for most servants, this is only a farming change. Um, like, it's not enough to elevate Ellie into EX. She is super, super good. But I think there is user error that, like, causes her to just, like, go down a little bit. It's, like, it's hard to have user error with Ozymandias. Because of, like, how his kit works. It, like, you could easily screw yourself over with Ellie if you do not know, like, what you're doing. Um, and, like, actually suffer from the demerits. Um, 
Robin X not changing. Santa Martha, again, not changing. He would be an EX, but because of niches and just like oversaturation of power mods, there is a little bit diminishing returns on Martha, but not by that much, just because of how much value Martha does provide. Um, yeah, no, even though Martha provides more damage than Nightingale, Nightingale is what Nightingale does is just she doesn't have much competition. There aren't many servants that can give a guts and then just buff the sh like really buff up your unit and then just die off. There are like most other units like that, they want to stick around. Nightingale, she's fine to die off. Um, and she's used a plethora of times for most uh, Kiara fights, like big Kiara. Ty Sui not changing. Uh, I'm just double checking Valks. Yeah, no, it's a kill for demonic. Like this, this is a weak, this is a weak effect. Like if you're not finding anti-earth and something happens to Valks buffs, they're gonna fall off. They're gonna fall off really, really hard. Uh, their face guard, like, they're not gonna get, be able to get back to the MP. Their face guard value, it's it's just not there. So, I'm fine with keeping them in A+. Plus for farmers, you're not using them for anything else but farming. Kichi, because she's quick, you actually would have a reason to use her other than just farming. Uh, and now we're up to current NA, so we have like two more years left. EO. Where do I have EO? A. No, she's staying there. Her refund isn't going to be the best, but she brings the neutral damage and is comparable to mid-tier uh, loopers getting uh, counterclass. Like, what I mean by, like, mid-tier is, like, units that pretty much uh, are sitting around 200,000 with uh, double support Oberon. Yeah, in general, if it's around 200,000, do like, double support Oberon, EO is going to be doing around the same damage. And, yeah, like, power mod against Divinity... Uh, technically Wild Beast, um, Evil Curse, yeah. Yeah, there, there are a lot of Divine Servants, and because she's a ruler, she's going to be able to attack a lot of them. She might not be doing most damage, but she will still be doing more damage than some of the weaker loopers. Or DPSs, then she can do crits. Pretender Ellie. Uh, did anything for you change? Yes. Yeah, okay, so Ellie. All of her stuff can be popped back-to-back -back turns. She makes a shit ton of stars. For multi-core. Yeah, for multi-core. Um, where... Again, wherever I have her, I'm going to leave her. I haven't used her in a very, very, very long time. Um, just because Buster Pretender is kind of in a weird spot, especially because she can't actually do farming. Um, yeah, like it's not that she's bad at what she's doing. It's just that like currently I don't need what she's offering, so I haven't needed to use her. Uh, I do think, like, with everything here, 
Like she doesn't have, if she had hit count restriction, I'd probably bring it, bring her down, but she doesn't have the same hit count restriction like uh, Karna or um, Mixa. So yeah, she stays where she is. The Tonta got a buff. I remember, I remember this clearly. He got a buff. Um, yeah, and he was able to get uh, Gage. And then that's also stacking with cool, um, the cooldown reduction. Uh, to like better sustain, like after these come uh, get off cooldown, it's only a turn of downtime for almost all of his skills. Yeah, all of his skills will have good uptime for the first uh, pops, and then if they if it has to go on longer, you should be good. Um, this also applies to his MP, and it's an extra fifty. Uh. I am willing to bring Hokusai down, though. Like, I'm not willing to bring Satanta up, but I will bring Hokusai down because I do think Iori is just, like, so much better than Hokusai. But I also think Hokusai is better than Satanta, but not by, like, two tiers. And I don't think Hokusai should be an EX that much anymore. Um, yeah, I know I should have done this earlier when I was talking about Hokusai. But I have used her recently, and yeah, yeah. Like I used her recently in summer uh, seven, and was just farming with her. I do think like she brings utility, but I do think she's just not going to be as good as Iori. Like she's carried by being arts. You didn't hear her because she's arts. Like, let's be real, Satanta. It, it's not that it's a shame he's quick. I like that he's quick. Uh, it's just that his buff values are just a little too low. It's like he wants to fight wild beasts. Uh, there aren't. It's like there aren't that many that he actually can fight. That's his issue. Like his base kit is good. Is that is just, like his niche is just like not needed yeah so he's not changing Nakriab uh she's not changing either and I truly am not uh someone that has so much experience with her um yeah like I see the value in her buffs. I just like ha honestly just haven't used her enough as a support to like really go that in depth on her. Uh, it's her placement is based on values uh, and just like what I ha what little I've used her because like I'm pretty sure she was just more fresh in my mind uh, when I made this list last year. Like because I definitely have not used her uh, knock in the months since that uh that recording all right four more psycho magoichi um i am pretty much standing by the fact that i think she belongs in ex i i, I know like people are gonna have like issues with that but no, like the only reason like I did not do the U Olga fight with her is simply because of cooldowns. Like mine is just like not leveled and it just made you doing trying to do U Olga just like not fun. Um like this was like this was like on an eight turn cooldown trying to do U Olga. So like I wasn't even able to like have good uptime on this shit. Um but 
she was still competing. Like, she was still doing stuff similar to my Zenobia, but my Zenobia is like cracked out of her fucking mind. Like, maxed out, like, two appends, uh, level 90. Well, my Psycho was like level 80 and did not. I'm not even sure how far this was even leveled. I think maybe this is leveled to max, but that was it. Everything else is at four. Um, she's not going to be a farmer, but she doesn't need to. She is like in raid in battles where you're not like just blowing it up. She is going to shine. If you cannot one phase or one turn the boss, Psyka against Sabres will do like just very well. Uh, the issue again though comes down to like anti Saber is done really, really, really well by classes by yeah, by servants that are not archer. Like anti Saber is just like unfortunately like the just like point and laugh. For like if you bring an archer for that, because MHX does it better. Or no, MHX does it okay. MHX A obliterates any single targets, like any single target saber, especially if they're good. Musashi fucking decimates all the AoEs and starts competing with the single targets. And now we also have CL. But Xiao, she's only 1.5, but she's still a monster. So, Taika, she stay where she is because she's a welfare. She's maxed out. You don't have to gamba. And, like, the event she came out in, she was one of the best options for the final boss. While still be able to, like, farm and shit. So, she's staying in EX. Nemo Santa. I just want to like look over this real quick. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not changing. I think Nemo uh as a multi-core uh DPS good solo core. Not that good. Not that good. Yeah, 30 arts. Gauge per turn. And a 10 battery. And that's it. As a solo looper, like, he is just barely looping 100%. Like, if you're gonna do AoE arts looper, just use Habitrot. If, like... You're looking for solo core. And then Habitrot also can do all the other shit she does. Oh, yeah. Actually, speaking of that, why have I not brought up Habitrot? Why the fuck would I need to bring up Habitrot? Like, she's... She is, Habitrot is literally the most uncontested EX four-star, like, free servant in the entire game. Like, she by herself can farm you QP, and you don't even need other, like, you barely need other supports. She starts from zero, and then, like, any amount of arts buffs, like, just make her be able to do her job. And then she spams stars, so on turn three, like, if she's not MPing, she can crit, or she can just die after the second wave, and you just have a, like, single target come in, and just, like, nuke it with, nuke, um, the boss with either MP or crits. Like, she is fucking awesome. And I really want an event where she is Morgan's win wing woman because I find that would be just funny as shit for Valentine's Day. Where Habitrot unlocks Morgan's bride potential. Or her and Bargus. <laughs> Let's make her job as hard as possible. <laughs> All right. Last two. Iori. Not changing. If anything, he only got a little better. He can pop this on turn two instead of just waiting till turn one. So he's double stacking his crit damage and his mental debuff resistance. So he's not getting any of the shit. You can't. 
he he can get stunned. This is terror. It is not stun. But any kind of mental debuffs are just gonna fall, slip right off him. Uh, yep. Pop this turn two. This is also his battery, so you're probably not gonna do that if you're doing Oberon looping. Uh, and again, you can pop this on turn two. Uh, this would go away. Like you'd be wasting the dodge, but or double stacking damage cut along with uh card buffs these aren't even that high so like getting them up to double will help his damage out although the bitch buffs this is like double stacking this is not going to be higher than bitch uh and then like his ramp up yeah no the iori i think is one of the most I don't want to say like one of the most perfect um, single target savers, but he is like the most modern welfare and like one of the most modern ser like sabers out of all of them, period. All right. So the last servant to talk about is Sono G. And because he did not get talked about at all in the last recording, I get to briefly talk about him here. If you guys have not heard me rant about Sonoji and how fucking broken he is, this is, the, I think, between, like, all of these other ones, like, the top three EX, four, well, uh, four stars, Abatron, Nightingale, and Sonoji. The reason Sonoji is really, really good is that he enables Buster Farmers, like, Tiamat, like Black Rail Loopers, to actually be able to do multi-core and negate the biggest uh, issue with Buster Farming. And that is poor turn one damage. Because you're supposed to be double stacking buffs. For the most part, you can't do that on turn one. So if you have someone like Sono G come in and nuke the enemy in front of you, while still letting your uh, Buster Farmer be able to MP so they can go through their cycles, um, especially Tiamat because she ramps up Buster. Like, and because of him MPing, like, she actually gets higher overcharge, so her damage actually goes up because she's doing a multi-core setup. Uh, yeah, also, this guy is fucking awesome in Wish on the Holy Night. Uh, I'm loving the playthrough I'm doing right now. Like, genuinely... Uh, if you enjoy like more of the slice of life stuff from Fate Stay Night or like even FGO, like more of the fate, um, slice of life stuff that's going on, like play through that game. It is fucking amazing. And you just see like how mages that aren't wrapped around, uh, servants just behave. And it's just like awesome. Like I love the three, um, the Mahoyo Trio's uh, dynamic is awesome. But enough about that game. We are talking about gameplay here. Hard buffs, 20%. Lethal damage evasion. Oh, my God. This skill for... So I do a lot of face carding before I start popping buffs for a 90 plus for efficiency sake. Like, I'll run all uh like all six slot but i won't try to three turn it just because trying to three turn it i have to bring up the cost and i can't really do the six six slot it's just easier to like face card a little bit his whole kit kind of is designed like that so you can set up for buster farmers to like have their max potential like and because you're doing it like that, you kind of can make any buster server servant start off with black rail. Um, because this lethal damage, it will get his HP low for one of his other skills. And then every time he's about to die, it will just like negate it. Uh, it's, I believe this stacks with other dodges. Um, yeah, stackable with other dodges. And normal evasion is taken before lethal damage taken into account. So, oh, but if you're if he's if Sono G is dotted, it 
this isn't going to block it. But Dodge doesn't block DOTs anyway, so yeah, it's not going to block Sacrifice either. Second skill, why um, the lethal evasion is important. You get his HP really low, and you get his crit rate, crit damage up to 100%. Like, literally the opposite of CL. And you don't even have to get it, like, super low. Like, he is, like, literally... He's dead. 25%. Most of the time, unless you're dealing with an enemy that's critting him to, like, absolute death, like, he is half health. He gets crit, and he would have died. Um, like, it's going to stop that. So it's like, as long as the enemy is not critting him, he should be able to get this full crit damage. And multiply the value of MP gauge. If you watched my um, 90 plus stuff, 90 plus plus from last event with uh, Hibiki and Ch uh, Chikagi, or I think that's their name. Uh, this effect works really, really well with Tiamat and Oberon starting out in the front. Because if he has his mana loading, that means he's able to MP just from this. And then if he has any other charge, he goes right into overcharge. Or like 75 to 100%, he goes right into overcharge. The most Sono G will ever need is 100% battery to get the max effect out of this. But again... This is a multi, um, the way this works, it works really well with multi core. You don't have to pop big 50 batteries on him. Like AoE batteries literally double in value as long as this skill is maxed out. Third skill is why I, um, is the reason why he's so good at like face carding for the first few, um, few turns of uh, farming if you're not trying to three turn and you're. Caring more about efficiency. You can pretty much time uh, when he gets another buster buff to get the full 50. And then you also guarantee that any cards that show up for him that turn are going to be the card you choose. It does not just have to be buster. So, but the reason you want buster is so that you can do a buster buster brave chain. Uh, yeah, BBMP. With him, because you cannot follow up his MP with anything. You can't. So there is no extra attacks with Sono G. Um, not if you plan on MPing. If you're not MPing, sure, he can do extra attacks. But, he has, but if he MPs, there is no uh, extra attack unless he has a guts. Pass, passive skills, presence concealment for star gen on a berserker. Cool, but like you're probably not hitting the quick card. Uh, crit attack chance resistance. This is very, very important for like the lethal damage evasion in this combo. It means that he's less likely to get crit, thus, his HP is more likely to get lower without being like stopped at like 50 or even 100 percent because it's miracle crits. Uh, and then debuff immunity or mental debuff. Uh, resistance of terror and confusion, and also skill seal debuff immunity. Uh, these as passes, awesome. Um, I did OC3 and I got pissed the fuck off because the Stalfo just ran like stunned Kagetora because she was a ruler. There are other, like, I know that example has nothing to do with this, but it's like effects like that where the boss is just gonna throw some annoying shit at you and you can't even pop skills to neg it or it's unremovable uh if you have immunity it doesn't fucking matter what the chance of like them landing the debuff it's not gonna happen sono is immune to skill seal he's always gonna have access to all this stuff he's never gonna be get caught with his pants down Unless he's like straight up stunned, like the Kagatora example, you can't you can't really do anything about that because uh, he's only immune to terror, not stun. Uh, this doesn't matter because he's not gonna stick around on the field long enough for your cooldowns to come back off. Uh, yeah, so this doesn't matter. Uh, mana loading is the only thing 
uh, you really should get. Because it, like that setup with Oberon and Tiamat, that is my, that's how, what I found is it like one of his best teams or one of the best ways to use him. Um, yeah, anything else, like it is what you, it's what you want. Uh, he's a welfare. So again, you can get all these as with all the others, uh, as long as you bond level them, you should be able to get all these appends eventually or 120. Uh, events give you like 480 uh, coins, so you shouldn't have that many issues as long as you play the game and just do everything. MP ignores invincibility, ignores damage cut. There is no one else in the game that does this. There is no one else in the game that ignores damage cut. So anything, any fight where the enemy has like a million damage cut, Stone OG is just going to fucking punch the shit out of them and kill them through that level of damage cut. Uh, there are a bunch of advanced quests where Stone OG can take advantage of this. Uh, and then he also gets super effective damage against anyone that has a defense up. Like these are, but he's going to kill himself after. Can use guts to stop it, but honestly, the best utility for him is for him to die, and then you have someone else come in. Very similar to what Chloe, uh, Miss Crane do. He moves the teams along. The difference is he is going to take out who he's fighting, or if not, he's going to weaken them to the point that like your main DPS is not going to have a problem. Yeah, I, I don't really talk about this stuff uh, when we talk about tier lists. But yeah, I have this guy in like, no joke, he is top three EX welfares in this game. Uh, his utility in endgame, because his placement is an endgame play uh, placement, it's not mid-game like a lot of these other servants. If I wasn't specifically clear about that, uh, all of these farmers... You mostly don't use them for 90 plus or 90 plus plus. This is, that's not what this tier list is for. Um, it's mostly general use uh, and like niche applications will elevate them um, depending on how you like, depending on how usable it actually is. Uh, but yeah, like these three in particular are the three you'd probably use the most. In your end game stuff, uh, Sona G is probably uh, no, yeah, no. All three of them are niche, but what they do, they do so goddamn fucking well. There like really isn't competition. Like Nightingale, her main competition is Castoria. Her main competition for what her purpose is is Castoria. Like, and she's not even. She's not providing anything like what Castoria does, and her competition is Castoria. It's negating uh, Invul Pierce that you can't do anything about, like from bar breaks. That is what Nightingale's role is, if I wasn't clear about that. Um, and you just can't take that away. All right, this rant, definitely going on for way too long. I would like to stream after barely being able to do it yesterday. So, hope you guys enjoyed me rambling and updating this list. Uh, you, like, you guys will probably know it before, but this is going to go up on YouTube out of order. Uh, if I do the recording for the tier list, it will be recorded on YouTube, but I will, like, condense it so it's not just that part of the stream. Uh or I'll just use that stream. No, no, no. Because I'm probably going to take a break. Um, yeah, I'll probably just clean out the stream uh, on YouTube and then just upload that. But, yeah, keep rambling. Uh, Saber and Archer, like, when I update those, though, they will be on stream just because there are way more servants that I have to, like, look through uh, than just welfares, like, looking for welfare buffs significantly easier than looking for all the other buffs that have come out um, from between 
uh, when I made the recordings and now and then including um, the Append 5. All right, peace. Hey, yo. So this is brief adjustment to the previous recording I did for this. So I'm just adding on to this. Um, this is just going to be like based on my own feelings and actually adding Hakano to this before I actually upload it. Because I kind of feel bad because the second I upload the low star, Hector gets buffed. So that's got to get updated at the end of the month. too. All right. So first things first, I'm going to replace two units um, out of just consideration, like especially compared to their competition. Uh, Kichi and Saika get moved down um, from EX to A+. <clears throat> Psyka, because I do think she's better than Chloe. I just don't think it's a full tier. Um, and it's only very, like, in specific places that Psyka is definitely better. But I know people will argue it, especially because Chloe has that 100% battery. But that's just how I feel. Like, I think Psyka is just better for harder stuff because she can actually use crits. And then Kichi, I can't, like, I really like Kichi, but in good consciousness, I can't put her up in EX when she still has problems. She's not able to black rail loop. Uh, like, she is really good. Um, but because of that, she's not better than Valks. But Valks also are... If they're not with a certain team, their refund is shit. So that's why they're not going into EX either. Um, all right. So now that that is out of the way, let us talk about Hakuno. Hakuno, um, in my original review, I did not talk about them as a DPS. I did not talk about them as a solo unit. I strictly talked about them as a support. But they are a free MP5. And if you've seen the like really dumb solo shit you can do with Hakuno, um, it's kind of obvious I'm going to put her in EX. Uh, we'll run through it real quick. But yeah, she is free MP5. Um, anti-purge defense, so can bypass solemn defense with Cuckoo, Alco, um, and Castoria. Free MP5, and a chance to stun, and because of how Hakuno works, you can kind of just reset scum this as much as you want to guarantee that you get the stun. Like, a 60% chance when you have almost unlimited chances to actually get like the stun chance, it's like you can do, you can do a lot with this. Um, and obviously the full rerolling. I already talked about this in the video. Uh, I strongly think that Hakuno like really does make it a lot easier on quick servants, especially. Um, for for them being able to actually use their cards consistently. Because quick, they have the best, like, they consistently crit. Uh, and if you just re-roll for the Buster card, awesome. But if you mix and match Scotties, you have just, like, way more options. And can, like, do refund stuff as well. Um, and then there's this skill for how it works in her solos. Uh... It is not hard to, like, just not take damage with her. Um, was it? I think Rio Emerald had, like, he said he could have stalled, like, the Sigrid boss with all the invuls for, like, 18 turns before, in a Hakuno solo, before she was going to, like, actually die. That, to me, is fucking ridiculous. And, like, that's at level 80. If you want to grail or hire to do like even better in solos, like, more power to you. And then like she also because the welfare, she is gonna have all this stuff. And I I didn't even think about this, but like because she's a welfare, uh, she like she's gonna actually have some type of advantage against all classes in the game. Like even though she doesn't get uh anti foreigner here, uh, she does get it here. So attack buff on every class, power. Oh no, attack buff. 
attack buff against foreigners in her opponents. And then, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't know why I thought this was a power mount. This is an attack buff. Um. Yeah. Uh, like, also, Matt's the level, like, just do a lot, um, just do events and you'll have this. Yeah, like, I, I can not, I actually can't put her in anywhere else but EX. Like, if she wasn't as good as solos, I would probably put her here. But Hakuno is just, like, good pretty much everywhere in the game. Um, and again, if you need her to do Buster Farming, Pretty sure you can. Uh, I will. I didn't really do it in the actual review, but I'll put it in here. And let's just double check whether Hakuno's damage actually shows in here. Oh, good. They finally actually added this shit. Okay. Every everything lines up. Um. Oh, right. I, okay, so I forgot about this. Because of, like, the normal class attribute triangle, um, Akino actually having different power mods does affect uh, the damage. Because if she's fighting Earth attribute, it goes against her normal attribute triangle. Yeah, like, here it is. Um, Hakuno is man attribute. So man attribute versus earth. Earth takes less damage, but sky takes more. So that's why there's that's why there's three different numbers here. And I'm glad it's actually showing this because when I was going through the reviews, these weren't showing. So I'll be glad to show these in the tier list this year. Um yeah. Like, you can pretty much pick and choose, like, this number, and it's going to double up. So, real quick, we'll just show best case scenario and worst case scenario. No, no, no. We'll just show uh, normal Buster Farming damage for Hakuna. Okay. So, what's wild here is that Hakuna almost does the same amount of damage to both of them. What you don't realize is this is a Berserker, and this is a Caster. She almost does two times effectiveness in a double bitch overall comp as long as she's hitting her niche. As long as she hits the niche of the enemy, she's going to do a lot of damage. Like 300,000 neutral is absolutely nothing to scoff at. Uh, I do think BB can has a higher... Hmm, I do think BB is just like just has a higher ceiling because she can also uh, touch Black Rail in more um, cost extensive team comps that like Hakuno just like really cannot touch just because she has a 30 battery. But like this isn't terrible damage. Like this isn't going to be arc with damage either. But like for you not having to roll for a five star. This is very, very good damage. So, yeah, I feel very comfortable putting uh, Hakuno in EX if she's able to output this much damage at level 80. Uh, if you grail her to level 100, th the numbers are going to go up. In fact, I'll show that in one brief second. So, going from level 80 to level 100, we see a, I want to say, a 20% increase in damage. Going from about 300,000 here to 360,000. It might be probably a little less between 15, uh, 15 to 20%. And again, still, this isn't falling that far flat. Now, obviously, in mixed nodes where the attributes are changing, this isn't going to be as easy to calc. But how her buff works is... If you have man and earth, and it's just those two, you just choose those two buffs. You don't have to choose sky. You don't have to pick all three. So you, you have the option whether to double up on anti-man 
or choose man, earth, earth, sky, sky, or earth, uh, sky, man, any combination you need. So this versatility, I have no problems putting her in the EX. All right. Um, yeah, hope, I'm probably going to have to change this again. Uh, if there's another welfare for Halloween, I don't think there is. If they're if we're saying if they're saying um, Hakuno is gonna have a friend point right up, so yeah, we should be pretty good. All right, peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.